In October 2021, Adobe Lightroom finally responded to the threat posed by Luminar and their AI photo editing technology. Sky replacement gimmick, ah, we don't need to bother with that. Well, out they come with subject recognition, sky recognition. Fast forward over a year, we're now at the end of 2022. Adobe has taken that technology even further with hair, eye, face recognition technology to enhance their masking tools. The question I have, are those tools any good? How do they compare with Luminar? our Neo, AI is clearly the future of photo editing. No longer can we ignore it. So let's look at the differences and compare the two now. Both Lightroom and Luminar have very impressive masking technology. The difference comes with what the software then lets you do with those masks. Lightroom creates those automatic masks and then it's up to you to do something with that. Luminar gives you a whole bunch of added functionality. For example, both pieces of software can identify the sky. It's only Luminar that can let you replace that sky. Both pieces of software let you identify your subject. Luminar then takes that a whole bunch of extra ways further. In fact, let's look at some of that now. Here we are, beautiful image of Alina. Let's take a quick look at some of the masking options inside Lightroom. Go up to your masking options as per usual. And here we have subject, sky and background. These were added over a year ago. If we click on the subject there, you can see it's detecting the subject. Let's count the number of seconds it takes to identify Alina. There she is. Now this must be a nightmare for masking technology. Look at her hair. It's one thing to draw a line around all this nice contrasty area, her shoulder, her shorts. You can clearly tell there's a subject there. The hair, absolute nightmare. Let's have a little zoom in on this to get a look at how good a job it's done. Let's just take the exposure up. Right, well, as you can see, around about some of the details there, we've got a little bit of an issue, but I think that's a very impressive performance. Now, in terms of the new functionality that's been added to compete with all this AI technology from the likes of Luminar, look at this, we've got people here. In this instance, we've got one person. If we tap on that, detecting person's features, we'll put a little timer, see how long it's taking to, to detect the person's features. There's the entire person. We can select the face skin, the body skin, eyebrows, eye, whatever that is, I think it means eye whites, iris and pupil, lips, teeth, hair. Here are all the adjustments we can make to the hair. So let's say we wanted to adjust the texture a little bit, just increase the detail there before and after. Yeah, it's definitely pulling out some of the detail in that hair. I think it looks quite nice. Or we could just simply change the color. Wow, superhero hair. This masking stuff is really powerful and it seems to be quite fast and quite efficient here in Lightroom. So let's have a look at how this goes in Luminar Neo. Can we quickly and effectively detect the subject here? Layer properties, masking, Hit mask AI and the software will try and detect the various elements in the frame. Well, it did it already there. That didn't take long. I was expecting to put a timer up, but this was the time. Human, let's see if we get our human here. Well, there we go, wow. Very similar and very impressive result. Both pieces of software doing an incredible job here with the hair in particular. As I say, fairly straightforward working around the side of the arm and such like, but this hair must be torture for this kind of subject detection. For a quick comparison with Lightroom's portrait tools, let's look at how Luminar does it. If we scroll down here to the portrait section, we have a whole bunch of face tools that we can use. Now we start with our face light, for example. You can boost the exposure of the face selectively there. Note that we didn't have to wait for Luminar to identify the various component parts of the face. Uh, you can slim the face if you want. Now, obviously we cannot improve upon perfection here. This is my wife, Alina, so we're not gonna do any of that. Add a little bit of skin smoothing and shine removal. Let's take them both up to halfway. Obviously you need to be really careful with this kind of stuff, especially on a, a man's face. It can look extremely artificial, but here Alina has very good skin, so we're improving on an already pretty good situation. So this is all down to taste and judgment, of course. If we look at a before and after, you can see we've, well, selectively smoothed out that skin without damaging the detail around the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose, the lips, and so on and so forth. Uh, coming back to the eyes, we can make a little adjustment here to the eyes. The eye enhancer, I think, is a fairly subtle way of doing things before after, we're just adding a little catch light there in the irises. We can add some more iris flares here. 
and we can even whiten the eyes. A little before and after, yeah, makes those eyes pop. As always, don't overdo it, but I think that looks quite good. Now, the difference in the workflow here with Luminar versus Lightroom is Lightroom can select all those parts of the face, but it's then up to you to decide what you want to do with those masks. So if we go back into Lightroom and let's say we wanted to soften the skin, for example. Oh, look at Alina's hair. That's such a huge improvement. I really like that. There we go, Alina. And we will do the face skin. And you can see it's got a really clever mask there around the face. Create the mask. Already this is quite a lot more clicks, I have to say, just to get the job done. Now what do we do? We want to soften that skin. So as I say, it's up to you to figure out how to do that. We could do that by reducing the texture. In fact, let's just go extreme here just to see what we can get here. We can reduce the texture and we can re reduce the sharpness. And okay, we definitely don't want to do that because it's messed up Alina's nose, all these details on her face. You can still get a good result, but it definitely requires a little bit more expertise to come in here and make those changes. Different shot here, it's actually a screen capture from video that we used recently for a thumbnail. Up in layer properties, can we just get rid of the background? Background removal AI, this is one of the recent, well that didn't take long, <laughs> this is one of the recent extensions that's been added, you have to pay for this as an add-on, but you know, if it's useful to you, then it's useful. Human is our main subject. Oh, look at that. It just added a little bit more to my hair once we clarified that we're looking for a human. So that's good. It refined the mask a little bit. We've got a little bit of tidying up that we might want to do around the hands here, but let's see how we get on. Let's remove the background and see what we are left with. Taking a few seconds. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty good starting point. We can refine this to get rid of some of the bits that we don't want. So we'll refine it by clarifying that this is background, i.e. we want to get rid of it. There we go, let's just go across here, du -du 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 -du, get rid of all of that. Nicely done. And just like that, bish bash bosh, we have a PNG that we can export and use as an overlay on one of our thumbnails. Here's another example of Luminar applying the masking technology in a way that you can't really do with Lightroom. So this is just a selfie that I took on a smartphone. But let's say for the sake of argument, you wanted to give some shallow depth of field to slightly one dimensional photos. We go straight into portrait bokeh and we do just that, add some bokeh. Let's just slide it all the way up in fact. And boom, okay, just like that. Artificial bokeh, but it looks absolutely Great, actually, <laughs> it looks absolutely fantastic. And keep in mind here that we have a subject, well if I hover over there, look at the subject, look at the way it's picked out the subject. The color of my jacket, the color of my hood is pretty much the same as the color of the background. I think that's an incredible, incredible performance. Same photo inside Lightroom, we've detected our subject already, as you can see, a very, very good mask. If we wanted to blur out the background, what we'll do is we create the mask of the entire person, Right click on the mask itself and we invert that mask and now we have a mask of the background. So that's a pretty good way of getting the background selected. Then we, if we want to create some bokeh, just turn the sharpness down basically. And that's kind of what we're limited to. It's still a pretty good result, but it's a little bit of a workaround essentially. We don't get as powerful an impact either. Although if we wanted more, what we could do up here is uh, right click and duplicate the mask and that will double up that bokeh effect. We'll right click and duplicate that mask again, and we've tripled it up. So you get there in the end, but I suppose my point here is that it takes a little bit more awareness and expertise to get these kind of results with Lightroom. What if we have multiple subjects in the shot? Let's give that a little go here. Go up to our masking tab again. You can see Lightroom here is detecting people. How many people is it going to find? There's five people in the photo. How are we going to get on? Ooh, there we go. Uh, one, wow, this is cool. One, two, look at that. Look at the way it's picked up the foot as well, coming out underneath the dress there. Three, four, five. Well, I have to say that's pretty amazing. Pretty impressed with that. Wow, look at that. Face skin, body skin, eyebrows, irises. They can see it somewhere in there somehow. Lips, teeth, and hair. Impressive stuff. In this instance, what I'd actually like to do with this photo is select all the people and then try and create some depth in the shot by adding a little bit of shallow depth of field there to the background. Mm -hmm. 
little bit of an issue there because this isn't replicating shallow depth of field. This is just blurred out everything in the image. To solve this problem, we need to subtract from this mask using a linear gradient. So similar to what we did with the brush, we're going to subtract here using a linear gradient. Let's drag that up at the bottom here because the bottom of this image cannot be out of focus. There we go, something like that. And we can approximate a shallow depth of field effect that way. Look up here, you'll see the mask has adjusted. There we go, so the mask is being applied to everything kind of behind us. And that's how you simulate shallow depth of field here using these masking tools. It's quite a good outcome. It's a little bit complicated and again requires a little bit of expertise to get to this point. Let's have a look in Luminar Neo. If our goal here is just to create some shallow depth of field to get some separation between us and the background, we don't need to mess about with all the layer properties masking up here. We just go straight down to our portrait tools, portrait bokeh, and let's see, can we add some bokeh even though there's multiple people? Go straight up to maximum there for maximum effect. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of worked. It kind of hasn't worked. What's happened to Alina? I'm not quite sure. There's obviously way too much bokeh here. Okay, you can see there's the mask that we're going to have to fix, essentially. It's not done a perfect job. What it has done a great job, however, is identifying the depth in the image because you can see the grass here around about the subjects is in focus as you'd expect it to be. So in this instance, we'll need to go in and tidy that up. How quick and easy is that to do? We have the brush here to focus. Let's see if we can paint some focus onto Alina. Mask refined, that's looking a little bit smarter there, but definitely a win for Lightroom when it comes to multiple subject recognition, on this photo at least. Lightroom's definitely done a good job of playing catch up with Luminar's AI masking technology. The issue is with Lightroom, that's where it stops. Once it's created the mask for you, you are on your own to manipulate the image thereafter. And it might not be so obvious, especially if you're new to photo editing. And this is where Luminar Neo comes in. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of options for taking advantage of that subject recognition capability. And we only scratched the surface here. We've got Atmosphere AI, where we can use the depth map that's created by Luminar to add some atmospheric effects in there. We can replace the sky with one click. You've seen all those portrait tools. The list goes on and on. It's some seriously impressive stuff, not to mention the background removal capability, which can be very useful for creating composite images, thumbnails, and so on and so forth. Very powerful piece of software. Two good options. If you are stuck essentially in a Lightroom workflow, you can use Luminar as a plugin. It integrates with Lightroom, so you can do your uh, file management, for example, in Lightroom, and then you can just dip into Luminar as you wish, using it as a plugin that's connected to Lightroom. That's something that we do quite often as well. Anyway, lots of information. This wasn't meant to be a comprehensive comparison of the two bits of software. Just wanted to look at some of these masking functions in particular. Do leave your comments below. We learn lots from you. Keen to engage with you and see what you're thinking. Pleasure talking as always, and we will see you next time.